Middle Ages, Wye was well known as a place where pilgrims could stop and rest as they travelled to and from Canterbury. More recently, it had a famous farming college. What many people don't realise is that Wye was one of the first places that the pilots were trained before being sent to France in the First World War. Wye was a busy place, especially at the aerodrome, across the river and the railway. Let's go take a look. This is the site of the aerodrome. I'm standing on the site of one of the huge hangars. There were three hangars here, all in a row, where the planes were kept when they weren't being used. Over there, in this field, is where the planes took off and landed. The airfield was there, in, it was one of a number of Royal Flying Corps airfields in the area during the First World War and of course aeroplanes were very new at that time and so the army took up the idea, thought they might be useful. The, the naval service also had some aeroplanes at the time but the Royal Flying Corps was based at the airfield during the First World War, in the airfield down at Bramble Lane. The Royal Flying Corps was actually part of the army. Its recruits were from Britain, Commonwealth countries and other allied European countries. But they weren't the only ones on this field at that time. Many people in the village became maintenance staff, carpenters, um, engineers and some of the village girls, even as young as 16, went down to help. But their job was to repair the canvas on the planes because planes at that time were made of a wooden framework covered with with canvas and then that was covered by stuff that called dope which waterproofed it and the girls had the job of repairing the canvas and putting the dope on so that was quite a very important time for for them because girls on the whole didn't have very interesting jobs at that time. In 1917, the Royal Flying Corps was merged in the Royal Naval Air Service to form the Royal Air Force that we know today. And a women's air force was formed, which many white girls volunteered, including F1 Ella Harling, whose picture's here. I was chosen the site of the airfield is that the ground nearby is relatively flat, but there are hills. The downs pictured behind me are those similar to that of northern France of which the young pilots would be facing. It was an ideal training ground. Nothing much in the way to crash in down here, but great rolling hills on which to swoop, duck and dive and practice dogfighting. Targets would be placed on the ground up here in the downs and the trainee airmen would swoop down and try to hit them. For the most part, it must have been fun, a world away from the battlefields in northern France. Not just the time for target practice, but also for thrilling stunts. One of the Flying Corps mechanics, Corporal Gordon Tucker, recorded in his diary. 4th of January 1918, very cold morning. L Lieutenant Whalen, a crack pilot, takes the passenger seat while I am in the pilot seat. Go straight up towards the hill in steep climbing turns. I keep my eye on the air pressure gauge and other instruments. Tell him when we reach 2,000 feet. And then goes the nose. The airspeed is 130 miles an hour and then back comes the stick into my chest. And over we go to hang upside down for a few moments and come down to 300 feet in a spinning nosedive. Plenty of thrilling stunts over the aerodrome and the village, putting the wind up some people. The 
Unfortunately, not everything went according to plan. Y was also well known for its crosswinds. Aircrafts were a bit flimsy and the pilots got a bit over, too overconfident. There was one incident where a pilot thought he would liven up a wedding down there in the centre of the village in the churchyard. In 1917, an airman was celebrating his friend's wedding at Y Church and thought it would be a very good idea to fly low and scatter confetti all over the place. Unfortunately, he couldn't regain height again. Flying around over the green, he must have hit a, he maybe hit a tree and then definitely plunged into the top of the King's Head Hotel. Fortunately, he survived, but lots of other plane crashes happened and the pilots were not so lucky. A airman tombs, he was buried here because his plane um, broke up in midair. Another, Lieutenant Agnew, thought he'd celebrate hitting a target and spun his aeroplane over and over three times, one barrel roll too many. His aircraft plunged to the ground near Bolton Corner Farm. We don't know very much about the crashes. There were quite a number in the area because these were all very young, inexperienced pilots who were very excited at driving these new machines. The, um, we know that there were about five crashes, at least in the area, because we have photographs of these, but we don't know where they were. One of them, we, we think, occurred in Crundle, and another one, a plane crashed into a pigsty on the college estate and a, a, several of the pigs were killed but the pilot was unhurt. There are accidents all over the area, one in South Walsborough, another in Hinksville. Many of these accidents resulted in funerals taking place here in White Church. Here, for example, is a picture of some men from the Royal Flying Corps crossing Rye Bridge on their way to M and Tomb's funeral. Other pictures show that the funerals were well attended, both by army personnel and villagers. Possibly the worst crash of all in Kennington, in the Golden Bull Pub. This is the Golden Bull Pub, recently named the Old Mill. The crash involved Cyril Whelan, whom we heard about earlier during those terrifying stunts. Cyril was only 19 when he died, but he'd already worked as an actor before the war, probably influenced by his father, a famous Australian musical star. This is how the crash was recorded. On Thursday, 25th of April 1918, Cyril Whelan was piloting an Avro trader machine on a training mission from Y Aerodrome. His plane was involved in a mid-air collision with the Sopworth pup from Y, being piloted by 2nd Lieutenant Alwyn Gordon Levy. The Avro, being piloted by Cyril, had an observer on board, Lieutenant Edmund Marable. Both machines came down near the Golden Ball public house. All three officers were killed outright. The deaths caused by these accidents are what we commemorate now. Fifteen pilots died. They came from all over Britain, from Belgium and from Canada, and have not until now had their names put on any memorial plaque in this village. But this year, their names have been carved onto a plaque which will be put next to the existing memorials. The memorial will be unveiled by the Bishop of Dover in November. Here on the centenary green, the village has set up a memorial to the airfield itself. So visitors who come here will know that the village once played its part in the Great War. As you pass by, please don't just remember those who died. Imagine some of the excitement, the young men learning a new skill jobs for the villagers at the airfield, patching up and fixing up planes. The Americans arriving in 1918. The stunts, the busyness, the bravery and the bravado, that too has to be remembered.
June 1919, the aerodrome was closed. The buildings were dismantled, sold, and carried away. The land returned to farmland. Peace returned to Wai and the countryside. This land here, on Bramble Lane, now looks like all the other farmland around it. It hides its secret well. Thank you.